Some people have worried that high energy projects like the Large Hadron Collider might have unwanted side effects such as spawning black holes. The mere mention of black holes can conjure up images of star-eating behemoths that stalk the galaxy gobbling up everything in their path. Certainly not the sort of thing you'd want roaming in our terrestrial backyard. But the kind of black holes that could conceivably form in the LHC or even its successor would be puny, weighing far less than a dust mote and measuring a mind-bogglingly tiny 10 trillion trillion trillionths of a metre across. Conventional wisdom says that black holes this small would effectively disappear almost the instant they formed, evaporating in a puff of gamma rays through a process known as Hawking radiation. They wouldn't have time to swallow a solitary proton, let alone begin dining on our planet's innards. On the other hand, no one's ever seen Hawking radiation, and it may be that micro black holes are more stable than most physicists believe. Much depends on the mathematical scheme of space and time used in the calculations. Physicists Roberto Casadio of the University of Bologna and Sergio Fabi and Benjamin Harms of the University of Alabama published results in 2009 based on a model in which the normal four dimensions of space and time are embedded in a fifth dimension of space. Their work suggested that micro black holes might hang around much longer than the paltry million trillion trillion trillionth of a second normally quoted. It would then be a contest between how fast the holes evaporated and how fast they could gulp down matter from their surroundings. Despite raising the spectre of longer lived micro holes, Casadio and colleagues were upbeat about our survival chances. We conclude that the growth of black holes to catastrophic size does not seem possible. Nonetheless, it remains true that the expected decay times are much longer than is typically predicted by other models. Despite these comforting words, Fox News was quick to jump on the story and make it seem just that little bit scarier. If the worst comes to pass, said the Fox piece, and there's now a slightly greater chance that it might, at least it might explain why we've never heard from extraterrestrial civilizations. Maybe they built large hadron colliders of their own. Irina Arafeva and Igor Volovich, mathematical physicists at the Steklov Mathematical Institute in Moscow, speculated early in 2008, before the LHC fired its opening salvos, that it might give rise to wormholes. These are like black holes, but with associated passageways, which could lead to other points in space and time. The Russians argued that the LHC might focus enough energy to set up closed time-like curves, the kind that in theory might make time travel possible. A wormhole, if it existed, could play havoc with the normal order of things. One end might be here and now, while the other was anywhere else in space or time, including the past or future. Effectively, the wormhole would serve as a shortcut through space-time, like the fictional subspace of Star Trek. Arafeva and Volovich suggested that the LHC could unwittingly become the first ever time machine, providing future time travelers with a stepping-off point for journeys into their past. At first sight, having visitors from the future doesn't sound so bad. If we could learn the trick, we might travel back to any point of our choosing. Time travel agents would be able to offer trips to the Cretaceous to walk with the dinosaurs, or city breaks in ancient Rome or Athens. But joking aside, trekking into the land of yesterday could prove to be a problem, depending on what happens when you get back. The old chestnut of the time traveller who hops into the past and accidentally kills their grandfather makes an interesting point. If it's possible to change the past, what happens to us and the rest of the world when we return to the present? It may be that even tiny changes to the past would get amplified and end up rewriting history. This was the theme of Ray Bradbury's 1952 short story, A Sound of Thunder in which the killing of a butterfly during the time of the dinosaurs causes the future to change in subtle but disturbingly noticeable ways. Alternatively, it might be that by tampering with the past, we'd end up creating a fork in time. Down one branch would be the future as it was before our trip, down another, the future as it had been rewritten. Either way, 
the consequences could be dramatic. We might end up changing or even destroying the world as we knew it. The idea of jumps through space-time using wormholes goes back to 1988 when physicist Kip Thorne and a couple of his graduate students at the California Institute of Technology took up Carl Sagan's challenge of devising a credible scientific basis for more or less instantaneous interstellar travel. Their theory, in a form palatable to the lay reader, found its way into Sagan's novel Contact, which was eventually turned into a movie. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the kind of wormholes that Arafeva and Volovich envisaged the LHC producing would be of the submicroscopic variety, not the sort that would be handy for humans to squeeze through. The most we could probably hope to see, the researchers thought, would be a signature that wormholes had popped into existence, perhaps in the form of energy having gone missing because some of the particles manufactured in collisions had disappeared from the here and now down a space-time plug hole. LHC time travel of a different and even more mind-bending type was entertained in 2009 by Holger Nielsen of the Niles Bohr Institute in Copenhagen and Masao Ninomaya of the Yukawa Institute for Theoretical Physics in Kyoto. Their suggestion came in the wake of a series of setbacks that delayed the accelerator coming online. The most serious of these incidents happened during tests in September 2008 when an electrical connection between a pair of the collider's superconducting magnets vaporized, causing a massive leak of liquid helium. As a result, all of the thousands of such connections throughout the instrument had to be checked and upgraded, leading to months of delay and a decision to run the LHC at only partial power with staged increases for the next few years. Nielsen and Nino Meyer's explanation of these accidents was that the universe we live in is so incompatible with the existence of the Higgs boson that any attempt to create this subatomic monstrosity would inevitably cause the attempt to fail. They proposed a cosmic censorship rule which, coming into effect any time a Higgs threatened to appear, would send ripples back through time to disrupt the event or device that led to the particle's creation. Not only the LHC fell foul of the cosmic no Higgs dictum in the nielsen nino Meyer scheme of things. In the 1980s and 90s, American physicists had hoped to build a giant machine called the Superconducting Supercollider, or SSC, with an accelerating ring 87 kilometers in diameter, the SSC would have dwarfed the LHC. Construction began near Waxahachie, Texas. 17 shafts were sunk and more than 23 kilometers of tunnel bored by late 1993. Then the US Congress pulled the plug on funding for the project, an event which Nielsen and Nino Meyer describe as almost a remarkable piece of bad luck. In fact, perhaps not really bad luck, as the physicists suggested, but considering that the SSC would have been the first device potentially capable of creating the infamous Higgs, its demise was due to the effects of the nature hates the Higgs rule subtly influencing the minds of American politicians. Needless to say, Nielsen and Nino Meyer's preprint wasn't given a hero's reception by fellow scholars. Perhaps it's just that professional physicists aren't imaginative enough, or perhaps they objected to the author's somewhat tenuous grasp of English grammar. In any event, the theory didn't emerge well from peer review. But that harsh judgment may have been premature. Fast forward to 2010. On a UK gadget blog called Crave, news broke of a curious incident at the European High Energy Lab. It read as follows. A would-be saboteur arrested today at the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland made the bizarre claim that he was from the future. Eloy Cole, a strangely dressed young man, said that he had travelled back in time to prevent the LHC from destroying the world. The LHC successfully collided particles at record force earlier this week, a milestone Mr. Cole was attempting to disrupt by stopping supplies of Mountain Dew to the experiment's vending machines. Mr. Cole was seized by Swiss police after CERN security guards spotted him rooting around in bins. He explained that he was looking for fuel for his time machine power unit, a device that resembled a kitchen blender. 
Police said that Mr Cole, who was wearing a bow tie and rather too much tweed for his age, would not reveal his country of origin. Countries do not exist where I am from. The discovery of the Higgs boson led to limitless power, the elimination of poverty and Kit Kats for everyone. It's a communist chocolate hellhole and I'm here to stop it ever happening. Some readers, presumably still short of their first morning coffee, were taken in by the yarn, but others quickly spotted the spoof and the date, April the 1st. April Fool's jokes aside, some worried citizens were so deeply moved by what they saw as the LHC's capacity for devastation that they sued CERN, the European organization that runs the Collider. In March 2008, former US nuclear safety officer Walter Wagner and Spanish journalist Luis Sancho filed a lawsuit in Hawaii's US District Court. It called on CERN, along with the US Department of Energy, Fermilab, and the National Science Foundation, which were also involved with the project, to delay the accelerator's switch on until its safety could be thoroughly reassessed. A few months later, the case was thrown out based on the testimony of several senior physicists who argued that the safety fears were unfounded. Five years earlier, a group of independent scientists had been mandated by CERN to review the various doomsday scenarios mooted before the machine was even built. In a report issued in 2003, they concluded that, as with other high-energy particle experiments such as the RHIC and Fermilab, particle collisions at the LHC posed no realistic threat to the public or the environment. In the light of the 2008 lawsuit and continuing rumblings about safety issues in the media, CERN commissioned a second review which came to the same conclusions. At the heart of the rebuttal was the simple observation that whatever physical conditions and events might occur in the LHC, collisions of vastly greater energies happen routinely high up in the Earth's atmosphere. Nature, wrote the LHC Safety Assessment Group, has already conducted the equivalent of about 100,000 LHC experimental programs on Earth. And the planet still exists.